Leia here from LeiaPerside.com and in this video I'll show you how to find RNS configurations for Fisher projections. You can find this entire video series along with my practice quiz and cheat sheet by visiting my website LeiaPerside.com slash chirality. Recall that a Fisher projection is a two-dimensional method for representing a three-dimensional molecule so that you don't have to deal with any dashes or wedges. So here we have an amino acid bonus points if you can name it in the description, and we want to figure out if it's RNS. If you're not comfortable with reading and understanding Fisher projections, make sure you first watch that series so that you'll understand what's coming forward and back in this model. But we'll have Mr. Organic Chemistry here to serve as a quick reminder that a Fisher projection, like his bow tie, has the right and left coming out, and like his spine, up and down is going dashes into the page. Now many professors will have you build a model kit or try to redraw this in three dimensions, but I find it a waste of time bringing in unnecessary doubt on your exams. Not worth it. Instead, we're going to use the same method we've been using for finding RNS on three dimensional molecules, keeping in mind what we're looking at. The group that's going up and the group that's going down are both into the page, and that means if we can prioritize and make sure number four is in the up or down position, we're good to go. Let's quickly rank this molecule. Nitrogen is priority number one and hydrogen is always priority number four. The carboxylic acid and the CH2SH both start with a carbon, so we go to the next group. Both start with a carbon so they cancel out. We go to the next highest priority. In the down position we have a sulfur which outranks any of the three oxygen atoms making this priority two and this priority number three. We've set our priority. We verify that number four is in the back because it's in the up or down position on a Fisher projection. Cancel it out. Trace an arc from one to two to three and we have an S configuration. That was simple. What if now we have a molecule that has number four on the horizontal so it's not facing the back? First we'll prioritize bromine one, OH2, amine 3, and CH3 is number 4. The next step is to ensure that number 4 is in the back, but it's not. So what we're going to do here is the swap method, which we discussed in an earlier video. If you're not confident with that, pause this video, watch and learn the swap method, then come back to understand what we're doing. Remember we want a total of two swaps. The first one puts number 4 in the back, in a Fisher projection puts it in the down position. So we'll have 4 down and one to the right. The second swap is to undo the enantiomer because remember one swap enantiomer two is the same so we want a total even number of swaps and I'll choose to swap two and three. That gives me a total of two swaps which is an even number meaning the chirality of this order is the exact same as what we started with. We cancel out number four and trace a path from one to two to three. This molecule is R. Sometimes you need to see it to believe it, so let's redraw this molecule as a three-dimensional Sohars projection and find RNS the same way. The Fisher projection has a central carbon with an OH going to the back, a methyl group coming forward, a nitrogen group coming forward to the left, and a bromine going down. I like my molecules to have just one group in the back, so I am going to tilt this entire thing forward. Do you see why I told you not to redraw it? It gets really, really confusing. But here I have the carbon. In tilting it forward, OH now came into the plane of the page. CH3 just moved down a little, but is still coming out of the page. And H2 also moved down, but is still out of the page. And bromine is still on dashes. It's still going into the page. But now we're faced with the dilemma of having two groups in the front. So even though number four is coming forward, it, it may not be as obvious. So you have to redraw it again. Do you see why I don't like this method? Let's see. We're going to spin it slightly in this direction so that nitrogen, instead of coming out of the page, goes parallel to the page and the methyl comes a little more forward. The bromine goes a little more back because we're sort of spinning it, taking this as a top and doing a spin from the top. So here we have an OH in the up position, NH2 now on the left side but in the plane of the page, CH3 is still coming forward, and bromine is still going back. 
Now we finally have just one group in the front. It happens to be number four, so we're going to use the reverse method. First we'll prioritize one, two, three, and four. When number four is in the front, you cross it out, trace a path from one to two to three, and then reverse it because you're seeing it backwards when number four is in the front. Well, that hassle to give me the same answer I already had that the Fisher projection started out as R. The reason I showed this to you is to let you visualize it once. Visualize it, understand it, maybe even build it with a model kit to prove it to yourself and never, ever, ever do that again. If you're comfortable with the swap method, you save so much time and confusion. This also works if you have a Fisher projection with more than one chiral center. So let's go ahead and place our substituents. And remember, we have to tackle each chiral center independently. We have a chiral carbon here and a chiral carbon here. My advice, use two different color pens on your exam when you're numbering so that you don't confuse what were your priority numbers for one chiral center versus the second one. I'll use green for the upper chiral center giving hydrogen an automatic number four, methyl an automatic number three, if there's also a hydrogen present, because hydrogen is always your lowest, methyl is always your second lowest when there's a hydrogen present. We have an oxygen as number one, and this is a carbon attached to who cares, because if there are only two options left and oxygen is one, it has to be number two. Now we can prove it if you're not sure, and see that this is a carbon and so is this. That would be a competition between two and three. But the lower carbon has a chlorine, the upper carbon has hydrogen, making the lower carbon higher priority as number two. But hey, we already got that earlier. The problem now is that number four, like Mr. Organic Chemistry's bow tie, is coming out of the page, four is coming forward. And in a Fisher projection, I like to just be safe and always put number four on the bottom. So we'll do swaps for the upper carbon starting by putting number four on the bottom. So we'll swap four and two, that's one swap. I'll randomly swap three and one for the second swap. Two swaps, that's an even number, same exact chirality. Cross out number four, trace a path from one to two to three, and we have S. Now let's do the same thing for the lower carbon, but we'll use purple to number them so we don't confuse what was numbering for the first and the second. Hydrogen is an automatic number four. In its presence, methyl is an automatic number three. Chlorine outranks everything except for iodine, giving me a default number two for the entire upper half of the molecule. Once again, number four is horizontal. We need it to go down. Keep separate track of the swaps. The swap method works per chiral carbon, so we can't say I did one swap on top, one swap on the bottom, it's even. No, each chiral center has to be treated separately. For the third swap, we'll put four down, so that'll be number four. On the left, we'll have number three. For the second swap, let's go ahead and swap one and three. So we'll have one on the left, three on the right. Remember, once four is down, swap at random. We have a total of two swaps, which is an even number, same exact chirality. Let's cancel out number four, trace a path from one to two to three, and it looks like the lower half of this molecule is R. Now imagine you had to take this molecule and do a whole lot of that. I don't think so. Practice this a few times because this method requires 100% understanding. You can't half-ass this. But once you really, really get it, you'll be fast and confident on your exams. And that's the key to success with a difficult topic like this. Be sure to join me in the next video where I show you how to find RNS configurations when given a Newman projection. Hint, hint, we're not going to draw it out as a sawhorse. You can find that video along with this entire series, Stereo Chemistry Practice Quiz and Cheat Sheet by visiting my website, layerforsci.com chirality.